Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we're going to be doing an introduction to thermochemistry or thermodynamics. Uh, so this is for all my intro to thermo students, all my students in first year gen chem, or, you know, maybe even uh, later years of high school if you're learning this during that time. So let's just dive right in. And this is the first of many for this playlist. Um, I want to help you guys crush thermo this year. So... Stay tuned for more for more videos on this. So in order to begin to talk about thermochemistry and thermodynamics, we want to talk about a really important uh, unit, which is energy. Energy, we define it as the capacity to produce heat and or do work. And this will the sentence will make a little more sense when I show you a formula that kind of corresponds with it. But that's kind of our general definition of energy in terms of thermochemistry. And we use a unit, this is the SI unit called the joule. Uh, and so one joule equals to one kilogram times meter squared over seconds squared. Um, so this might not fully, you know, compute with you right away, but in future problem sets that we do in the in the later videos of this playlist, maybe this will, you know, make more sense for you. And we also have another unit that we use when we talk about energy, which is the calorie. So uh, there's a bit of a conversion factor here between a calorie and a joule. So one calorie is 4.184 joules. And we'll see that again when we do more problems. Now in, you know, in daily life, we also talk about calories as energy in the food that we consume, right? Uh, but it's important to distinguish the difference between a calorie with a capital C versus a calorie with a lowercase c. So a calorie with a capital C is what we talk about when we're looking at food. That is the energy in a calorie. So if we see something that has 400 calories, we're talking about the capital C calorie. Now one capital C calorie equals to a thousand lower c, lowercase c calories. So, and that's equal to one kilocalorie. So, you know, if you're in other countries, you might see the energy being written as kilocalories. So this is just a little bit of a conversion between them. Um, so that's just for your knowledge and you will probably see this in problems. We, I'll definitely show you in problems in my videos. You might see this in class though. Okay, so like we said, we talked about energy, the capacity to produce heat and or do work. And we have a um, equation that goes along with that definition. So we have our energy or change in energy, which we will call delta U, the energy change. And this is of the universe, which we'll talk about in a second. And this equals to Q plus W. So Q being the heat energy that's transferred plus W the work that is done by or on a system. And we'll talk about what all of these mean. You just want to sort of associate this as delta U. So change in energy equals heat plus work. We'll talk about what it means to have a system, heat transfer or thermal energy transfer, and the universe. We'll talk about that in a second. But this brings me to the first uh, law of thermodynamics, which is that energy is conserved. So it is not being created or destroyed. It doesn't come out of thin air. Energy is, you know, the sum of the heat and work. So whatever change in energy we get will be, you know, combinations of a certain amount of heat with work, you know, maybe a lot of heat and no work, a lot of work and very minimal heat. So it's a combination of these things. So it's not created or destroyed, this energy. It's conserved in that it is, you know, essentially a combination of heat and work, essentially. Okay, so I talked about energy of the universe and I talked about a system a little bit, I touched on that. So let's just get some of that stuff, you know, a little bit more in our vocab. So this universe, we will term the universe as pretty much everything existing. And the universe is composed of a system and the surroundings of that system. So what do we call a system? A system is the portion of the universe that we are studying or observing. Uh, and oftentimes this, an example of a system, at least in thermochem, is gonna be a reaction. When we observe a reaction, that is 
oftentimes our system. And this will come back to us when we do problems. And then the surroundings. The surroundings is essentially everything else. Now, we define system and surroundings very, you know, particularly depending on what we're dealing with. So this is a bit of an ugly drawing that I did with, a, with my mouse pad. Uh, I don't, I'm not upgraded to the iPad yet, but so we have a flask with, you know, particles. So essentially a reaction being ha happening here in this flask. And so our system here is the reaction and the surroundings is going to be everything. It's the flask, the, the air, that is all the surroundings because it's an open flask. It's exposed to everything. Now, if we have something called a coffee cup calorimeter, uh, again, we'll see that later, but a coffee cup calorimeter is essentially, you know, a closed system. And so our system here is going to be the reaction, but our surroundings isn't going to be everything. This isn't exposed to the air. So that's how we're going to define system and surroundings very particularly depending on what sort of thing we're dealing with, as you can see here. So back to our formula. So this formula is so, so important for thermo. So we're going to drill this. We're going to nail what each of these values mean. And, you know, I'll show you problems in the future. We'll get all into it. So to start, I want us to focus on this delta U, or the change in energy. So U, it's also termed E, you might see it as E. You can see delta E. This is the internal energy. This is the total energy in a system. And a little side equation you might use is delta U equals U2 minus U1. So you could get a question that says, you know, what's the total internal energy of uh, of the system and then they might give you like two different energies and so you would do u2 minus u1 to get that change in internal energy. Now we have sort of two cases that we want to look at when we're talking about change in internal energy. So if we have a change in internal energy that is negative, less than zero, the energy of the system has decreased. And if we have a change in internal energy that is positive or greater than zero, we have an energy of the system that's increased. So one small little side side bit here. You see how I have the equation written as delta U equals Q plus W. You might have seen this equation written as delta U equals Q minus W. And here I'm harping about system, system this, system that. And that is because when we're in chemistry, particularly in thermochemistry, we often focus on the system. If you're doing physics, a purely physics course, you guys will probably focus on the surroundings. You're taking the perspective of the surroundings. But here in chem, we're going to take the perspective of the system. And so that's why this is a positive in chemistry. If it was a negative, that's probably what you would see in your physics classes if you're taking them. And so that's why I'm also focusing on system here. Uh, delta U is negative, the energy of the system decreased. If it's positive, the energy of the system increased. So we're literally focusing on system in this, uh, in chemistry, in this course. Okay, so again, back to our crucial, crucial formula. So now we're going to focus on Q, and Q is the heat. So we define Q as... Um, the transfer of thermal energy from one quote-unquote object to another. So in thermal chemistry, we do not define heat the same way we do in our day-to-day -day lives, where we say, you know, oh wow, oh my gosh, it's hot outside, or that the freezer is cold. In thermochem, we define heat as the transfer of thermal energy. So in a sense, we can only define something as hot if the thermal energy of it is being absorbed by something else, which we would call cold, because it absorbs thermal energy from something, right? So we have our little, you know, layman term sort of definition, and we can for we can, you know, go forward even more with this definition and say we have the transfer of thermal energy from a system to surroundings and vice versa. So one object to another isn't just, you know, a flask and a reaction. It could be, you know, the system and a surrounding of, you know, in other contexts. 
So that's a more of a general and more applicable to many different cases, this definition here. And once again, we have our cases that we want to look at. What are we dealing with when Q is negative? What are we dealing with when Q is positive? So when Q is negative, the system is losing heat or it's released heat into the surroundings. And when Q is positive, the system has absorbed heat. So it might be a bit difficult to remember all these, you know, cases, even for the delta U, and you're going to see it for work as well. Uh, but don't worry, at the end, I'll give us a little bit of a, a trick, if you will, on how I tend to remember this whenever I'm a bit stuck. Okay, so now we're going to focus on work, which we term W. So if you're in physics, um, if you're not in physics, it's okay. I'm just giving a little bit of a some context to what work is, so no stress. But if you're in physics, you've probably seen this formula. Work equals force times displacement or distance, if you will. So we often use this formula in physics and we talk about work as the energy that's transferred from or to an object by applying a force over it over a particular distance. And that's where we get this formula. So it's just the energy of moving an object essentially across a distance. That's what this definition means and that's what this equation means. And this might not be relevant for chem. Uh, this is just to put more context for what work is. So we have our two cases once again. What happens when work is negative? What happens when work is positive? So when work is negative, at least in thermochem, the system is doing work on the surroundings. And when work is positive, the surroundings are doing work onto the system. So our change in energy, internal energy, delta U, it's going to be a combination of this transfer of heat plus this doing of work of the system onto the surrounding or being done by the surroundings onto the system. So we're going to have different combinations of a positive value for heat and maybe a negative work or negative and negative, positive and positive, what have you. And that will determine our value and sign of the change in internal energy. So here are all the sort of cases laid out for delta U, Q, and W. So for delta U, this is how I tend to remember all of these cases. You know, when I'm in a bit of a pinch and I don't have time to really logic it out and think about it and, you know, write the equation and maybe put signs to figure it out. Basically what I do, just in a, in a, in a bind, you know, mid-exam, you gotta, you gotta act fast. So the change in internal energy is a little bit self-explanatory, right? When it's negative, energy decreased. That makes, you know, perfect sense. It's very logical. When it's positive, you're increasing, right? You're adding to it. So that one is pretty intuitive. Now it's with the Q and the W where people get tripped up. So I like to focus on the negatives. And then the positive is just essentially the opposite. So I don't bother thinking about the positives. I always think about the negatives um, because oftentimes I find in examples, the working examples, the negatives tend to be really important, at least in my experience with problem sets that I've done when I did undergrad. And so when Q is negative, we said the system is releasing heat or losing heat. So I like to think of this sign almost as like, it the Q is sort of releasing heat to the surrounding so as you can see it's like expanding the you know the sign here it's getting bigger on this side so it's kind of sending the heat over to this side which is going to be the surroundings obviously so I kind of think of it almost like a spray bottle it's like spraying it so it's releasing that heat it's just spewing it to the surroundings so you know that's a little bit of a I'm a visual learner so that's kind of my visual way of of just keeping my facts in check, in check, sorry. And so same thing with work, right? System is doing work on the surroundings. So once again, that W is sort of like spewing it, it's sending it off to the surroundings, like a little spray bottle that shoots, you know, it's it shoots like over a large area, if you can see my little pointer drawing. So it's kind of shooting it over to the zero or to the surroundings. So that's kind of how I remember that. And these two sort of coincide. Um, the system is doing something to the surrounding. It's releasing the heat. 
And same with this, the system is doing work on the surroundings. So that's how I keep all these facts in check. Um, and I tend to focus on negative. So then if someone asks me what is what happens when Q is positive, I just know that it's the opposite. So I know Q is negative means it's releasing heat. So Q is positive, it's just gonna be opposite. It's absorbing that heat. And yeah, that's it for today. Uh, I'll see you in the next videos with a lot more information and we're gonna do some problems and we're gonna nail thermochem together.